In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, such a joy to celebrate with you the solemnity of St. Joseph and our St. Joseph altar today. Though those joining us from their homes or listening on the radio cannot see all that's taking place, they can't see the many saints that are joining us in the pews today. So thank you boys and girls for dressing up as Joseph and Mary and as your beloved favorite patron saints. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. The son of David will live forever. The son of David will live forever. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. 
For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. The Son of David will live forever. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. The Son of David will live forever. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. The Son of David will live forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not for those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead, and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, and when he was 12 years old, they went up according to festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances. But not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. 
He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, boys and girls, you probably know the shape of Italy is often likened to a boot. Have you ever seen a picture of Italy on a map, anybody? So if you see the boot, right, with the heel, right, and the pointy toe, you might say that Sicily, a small island off of Italy, is where the soccer ball would be. And of course, Italians love their soccer as all Europeans do. And we love soccer too here in the States, but they really love soccer over there. So that's where the island of Sicily is. It's right where the toes of the boot of Italy are. And some time ago in Sicily, which was known for all of its vegetation, it would be growing all kinds of fruits and, and crops, there was a drought. That means there was no rain for a long time. And of course, not only do we need water to drink to, be, to survive, but plants do as well. And so without the water, they started to wilt and turn brown and get crunchy. Everywhere you'd walk, you'd just be walking on wheat stalks that once held green life and were just now dead and desiccated, right? And so the only thing that allowed them to survive through this terrible drought and famine that it caused was one bean. There was one crop of the fava bean, right? It was the only thing that allowed them to have enough sustenance to try to get through it. And they went and they prayed to St. Joseph. St. Joseph. Who is St. Joseph? Anybody know? Yep. Father of Jesus. So he's the adopted father of Jesus because as we hear in the gospel today, who's his real, real father? God the Father. But you're right. When Joseph adopted Jesus, just like when anybody adopts a child, they become their father, right? Maybe not a blood father, but they are their father. So Joseph is this father, this foster father to Jesus. And so they prayed to St. Joseph, why? Because just like Joseph cared for baby Jesus and for Mary, they wanted his protection and guidance in their time of famine and hunger. And so they prayed to St. Joseph and you know what happened? The skies opened and the rains fell, and the rains fell, and the drought finally ended, and they were saved. And as a response of gratitude to St. Joseph, they started a tradition that now has spread throughout the entire world of Catholicism, not just for Sicilians, but for every Catholic and lover of St. Joe. They started what's called a St. Joseph altar. Can you all find the St. Joseph altar here in the church? Point to it if you can find it. Adults too, you're all kids here tonight, today as well, so there you go. What's, what's on that altar, right, back in the first celebration of it, were all these foods that the people brought as the produce. Because the rains came, they were able to grow the crops, they were able to have food, and you know what they did? They brought their first crops all in honor to St. Joseph. Does St. Joseph need to eat all that food? No, St. Joseph even on earth anymore? No, he's a saint in heaven. He's eating at the banquet of the Lord. He doesn't need to have pineapples or apples or bread or cakes, as good as cake is, because he's got all that in heaven. What they did on that first St. Joseph's day, that St. Joseph's altar day, is they then gave all that food to Joseph, but then they distributed all to the hungry and the poor, the people who still did not have enough nourishment or sustenance. Everything from the St. Joseph altar went to live in mercy, to care for people who were neglected, the people who did not have. So we continue that tradition today, boys and girls, and in many churches throughout the world, they have altars just like this. Maybe bigger, maybe smaller, some might be grand with all these tiers, and some might be a little one in your home, not even in a church, just in a corner table with your statue of St. Joseph. Wherever that St. Joseph altar is, it represents our gratitude to St. Joe for being a protector, not only to Joseph to, G to Mary and Jesus and to the people of Sicily, but 150 years ago, St. Joseph was named the universal protector of the entire church. 150 years ago. That means he's the guardian of all of us to take care of us, just like he took care of Mary and baby Jesus. And that's why on this 150th year, which was proclaimed 150 years ago, December 8th, 
that this is the year of St. Joseph. Pope Francis has called this the entire year a year of St. Joseph. So this is even extra special to celebrate today. And boys and girls, when you think of St. Joseph as a protector, it's a call to each one of us to also be a protector. See, a father isn't a father just because they have a blood child. A father becomes truly a father when he accepts the responsibilities for raising his child, whether from his own lineage or whether through adoption or foster care. But even grander than even the family, in a way, each one of us, when we look out for our neighbor, especially the poor, the neglected, the persecuted, the misunderstood, the people who feel like they're orphaned or alone, every time we look out for those people in particular with a heart of love, we become a kind of father, don't we? A kind of mother who wants to protect just like Joseph does. Pope Francis, he said something really beautiful, I thought. He said, he focuses on the chastity of Saint Joseph. And whenever we have our adoration here, boys and girls, when I was your age, we'd always sing in the divine praises, um, Joseph, um, most chaste spouse. And I always thought as a kid, thought, who's, who's running after him? Is Joseph lost? Why are they chasing him so much? Most chaste spouse is spelled a different way. Chastity is a kind of love that means it's the best kind of love because we don't possess other people. We don't treat them like possessions just for our own needs or to serve us or to move around. A chaste love, which every single person is called to have, means there's such a deep respect for the other that we give the other a freedom. And actually the role of dads in particular, and certainly moms as well, is to become useless. A father really fulfills his vocation when he raises his kids so well that they become in their freedom independent, holy, make good decisions, that a father can actually let go of his child, right? Because he's done everything he's supposed to do. He's become, made himself useless because he's poured himself so much into his kids that they now can stand on their own as adults. It's kind of what we see prefigured in the gospel today, right? Joseph and Mary lose Jesus, and Joseph has to give away Jesus to God the Father. And Joseph's only job is to raise the humanity of Christ Jesus so that he can know his Father in heaven and that he can prepare him to take on his mission to save the world, to eventually be able to accept a cross, a cross made of wood. So boys and girls, parents, we are all called to be protectors of others, to participate in that lifestyle of St. Joseph, who was trusting, accepting, merciful, just, generous, chaste, and humble, willing to become self-effacing, not looking at making everything about him. That's why we don't even have one word from St. Joseph from the Bible. Everything was about what he could do for others to pour into Jesus and to pour into us so that we might become adults and we might become saints just like him. May the Lord be blessed. Amen. At this time, we have a wonderful tradition at Christ the King to invite all of our eighth grade boys forward so that they might make a consecration to Joseph, that they too might grow into those disciples Christ desires. Of course, all of our eighth grade ladies will be doing the same thing in a consecration to Mary on our May Day celebration in May. Men, I invite you to come forward in two lines. Gentlemen, there could always be a temptation when we come to these sacred mysteries, especially among our brothers, to be silly or, or not to understand what's going on because we're nervous or anxious. But this is a really beautiful moment. You've come through our school. Some of you have joined in different grades. Some of you have been here the entire time. And you're preparing to become these young men as you leave our school in a few months and gradu as graduates to continue to grow as young men of God, true disciples. This is one step in that journey that you might truly profess a consecration prayer, the desire of St. Joseph to be in your life in a special way to be a guide, that is, he leads you to your own vocations, perhaps as married men, 
perhaps as those consecrated and dedicated to the service of others, perhaps even as priests or deacons, that you might allow St. Joseph to guide you in humility and in acceptance. So I now ask you to turn to the back of your pages to together loudly profess your consecration prayer to St. Joseph. O oh, dearest St. Joseph, I consecrate myself to your honor and give myself to you that you may always be my father, my protector and my guide in the way of salvation. Obtain for me a greater purity of heart and fervent love of the interior life. After your example, may I do all my actions for the greater glory of God in union with the divine heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary. O blessed Saint Joseph, pray for me that I may share in the peace and joy of your holy death. Amen. This time I now bless your medals of St. Joseph that you will soon don. May these medals of St. Joseph and all those who wear them be blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you receive your medal, if you then return to the back of the line. My brothers, if you would, go ahead and turn around to face your fellow peers as well as family and friends and parishioners. Can we congratulate these young men and their consecration to Joseph as they continue to grow in faith, holiness, and charity? All right, men, I invite you to go ahead and proceed back to your places. Thank you so much. Together, brothers and sisters, let us stand for our petitions in universal prayer. With trust in our merciful God, we offer him our prayers and intentions. For all priests that conform to the image of Christ, our eternal high priest, they may serve with courage and joy and imitate the fatherhood of Saint Joseph in caring for the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all governmental leaders, may they be given wisdom to act with justice as they serve their people, to be just leaders as St. Joseph was just. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been affected by the coronavirus, may God protect them from needless anxiety and bring them health and mind and body. May he fill all of us with greater trust as St. Joseph received the will of God. May we as well. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are neglected, poor, hungry, may the Lord assist them in their need through the charity and love of our hearts and by the fruit of our hands. May we care for others as St. Joseph cared for Mary and Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dignity of every human being and for the right to life of every human being from conception through natural death, as St. Joseph saved the baby Jesus from the horror and the hatred of Herod, May we protect little ones even in the womb. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those gathered here, especially all of our eighth graders in this day of their consecration to Joseph, 
May the Lord help all of us to hear the invitation to follow him and give us a knowledge of our vocations. Through the intercession of St. Joseph, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Bishop Hannafelt on today, the sixth anniversary of his consecration as Bishop of Grand Island. May the Lord strengthen him in every way that he may care for the flock and imitate his patron saint, St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the special intentions and concerns we hold in our hearts. So boys and girls, right now, don't let this mass go to waste. Think of the person or persons or cause of charity or justice. You wanna offer this prayer for this mass. Tell that to Jesus right now. Name those names in your heart. And for all who have died, may their faith be credited to them as righteousness so as to be welcomed in the kingdom of their heavenly Father. And may all of us be granted the gift of a holy, happy death through the intercession of St. Joseph, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, on today when we celebrate the foster father to Christ who gave Jesus his very name, we ask you for the grace to imitate all of his virtues and that he might continue to protect the church and that we might have the heart of charity, especially for the poor among us. We ask you to hear these prayers to our one savior, your son, the son of Joseph, Christ our Lord, amen. This time we invite you to please be seated as we prepare now the altar for the liturgy of the Eucharist. And the masses celebrated here today at Christ the King are offered for the following intentions. This mass is offered for the intentions of Melissa Haggerty, and our 12, 10 p.m. Mass today is offered for the repose of the soul of Joseph F. Grohler, Jr. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, 
almighty and eternal God, and on the solemnity of Saint Joseph to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you, for this just man was given by you as spouse of the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, with your spirit. Is there an additional extraordinary minister of communion from Christ the King who might help? Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. The word in my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. 
Well done, good and faithful servant. Come, share your master's joy. In solidarity with all those who, for whatever reason, may not be old enough yet to receive communion, or for whatever reason may not be able to receive communion or even come to Mass these days, we pray with them out loud the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, boys and girls, I invite you, just think of St. Joseph. And what quality of St. Joseph do you most desire to imitate? Is it his silence or humility, his acceptance of God's will, his trust, his generosity, his mercy towards Mary, his faith in difficult times? his desire to protect others, his nobility, his chastity and purity of heart. This time ask the Holy Spirit, ask the Lord to give you a growth and increase in that particular virtue, that particular gift, to be like St. Joseph. Let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar, as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph, and graciously keep safe your gifts among them, through Christ our Lord. After we change a few things, we'll begin our Tupa Tupa ceremony, the traditional devotional activity for children on this day of St. Joseph and the St. Joseph altar. That'll take place again just a few minutes after the Mass concludes. A great thanks for all of those who helped make this Mass a possibility and this whole day and the St. Joseph altar itself and the luncheon to follow. We do have a free will luncheon. All the proceeds go to the poor. Spaghetti luncheon today from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. here at Christ the King in our parish center. You're more than welcome to join. And we do thank all those who are here in mass and all those watching from home and listening on the radio. May you honor St. Joseph in a special way this day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. your door Somebody's knocking at your door Oh sinner why don't you answer Somebody's 
is knocking at your door. Oh, it's like Jesus, somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door Who is there? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph What do you want? We seek food and shelter. There is no room for you here. Jesus knocks on the door of our hearts, but often we are too preoccupied by the concerns and the seductions of the world to hear him. Father, give us the grace to open our hearts to your Holy Son and to grow in the friendship with his companions, the saints. knocking at your door Somebody's knocking at your door Oh sinner why don't you answer Somebody's knocking at your door Somebody's knocking at your door Aren't you Somebody's knocking at your door Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, what do you want? We seek food and shelter. There is no room for you here. Jesus knocks on the door of our hearts, but often we are too precious to hear him. Father, give us the grace to open our hearts to your holy Son and to his little ones. The unborn, the poor, the unevangelized, the sick, and the marginalized. is knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Jesus calls you. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Who is there? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, what do you want? We seek food and shelter. Welcome to this house. The table is set. The food is prepared. Come in and honor us with your presence.
marching in Oh, when the saints go marching in Oh, I want to be in that number When the saints go marching in When the sun refuse to shine when the sun refused to shine Oh, I want to be in that number When the sun refused to shine When they crown him Lord of all In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God, who has called us to be saints, be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we honor the memory of Saint Joseph in this special year of Saint Joseph, he who is husband of the Virgin Mary and patron of the Universal Church. We rejoice at this table, which is a sign of God's generous blessings and of our call to serve the poor and hungry. We pray that through the intercession of St. Joseph, we too might join the saints at the banquet of the Lord in the heavenly kingdom. Brothers and sisters, listen to the words of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother, Mary, was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together. She was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. Happy the people who acclaim such a God, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who find their joy every day in your name, who make your justice the source of their bliss. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. With my chosen one, I have made a covenant. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your dynasty forever and set up your throne through all ages. Forever, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock who saves me. I will keep my law for him always. With him my covenant shall last. Forever Forever I will sing the goodness, goodness of, of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. 
Let us call upon the name of the Lord through the intercession of St. Joseph. Please respond to each invocation. Lord, you are our hope and our strength. That, that we who have listened to the word of God may do his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are our hope and our strength. That we who have experienced doubt and fear may be helped in times of difficulty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are our hope and our strength. That we may hunger for justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are our hope and our strength. That we who seek God's way may complete our journeys to God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are our hope and our strength. That we who follow the example of St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, may strive always to build up the body of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are our hope and our strength. And now to sing after me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, our Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble son of the house of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Husband of the mother of God, pray for us. Guardian of the virgin, pray for us. Foster father of the son of God, pray for us. Faithful guardian of Christ, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph, chaste and just, pray for us. Joseph, prudent and brave, pray for us. Joseph, obedient and loyal, pray for us. Pattern of patience, pray for us. Lover of poverty, pray for us. Model of workers, pray for us. Example to parents, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of family life, Pray for us. Comfort of the troubled. Pray for us. Hope of the sick. Pray for us. Patron of the dying. Pray for us. Terror of evil spirits. Pray for us. Protector of the church. Pray for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Let us now pray to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. All provident God, the good things that grace this table remind us of your many good gifts. Bless this food 
and may the prayers of St. Joseph, who provided bread for your son and food for the poor, sustain us and all our brothers and sisters on our journey towards your heavenly kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And together, boys and girls, and all those here in the church, on the back cover, we have the act of consecration to St. Joseph. Especially in this special year of St. Joseph, let's let our hearts really will this consecration. Together, O oh dearest St. Joseph, Joseph, I consecrate myself to your honor and give myself to you, that you may always be my father, my protector, and my guide in the way of salvation. Obtain for me a greater purity of heart and fervent love of the interior life. After your example, may I do all my actions for the greater glory of God, in union with the divine heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary. O blessed Saint Joseph, pray for me that I may share in the peace and joy of your holy death, amen. Lord, you have given us the saints as our intercessors in heaven. May the prayers of St. Joseph always help us to do your will and live in your love. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. On behalf of the parish, we thank all of you for coming and all of those who donated baked goods for the poor. At at the conclusion of the final hymn, the con congregation is invited to come forward and to walk by the St. Joseph altar as they, f as they follow the saints to the traditional free will offered offering spaghetti luncheon in our parish center. All proceeds from our luncheon, luncheon will benefit our St. Vincent de Paul Society outreach to the poor. As you pass the St. Joseph altar, please notice the exquisite artist artistry of the bakers and the many Christian symbols on the altar. Please join in singing our concluding hymn, Holy Patron, the Saluting.
children the 